Hi again. Uh, this video I'd like to use to uh, talk about the condenser, uh, the next component in the AC system. As you might remember, uh, in the earlier video we discussed the compressor. So why call it a condenser? So we can understand much about why it's called a condenser by just looking at what's going into and coming out of the condenser. So as I described in that earlier video, we have the compressor creating this very hot vapor and that's pushed out of the compressor by the high pressure line. That high pressure line is also called a vapor line for that very reason. If everything's operating the way it should be, there should be nothing but vapor in that line coming out of the compressor going to the condenser. Coming out of the condenser, we have a line that's going to the evaporator. That line is called the liquid line. Again, if everything is operating just the way it should, we should have nothing but liquid refrigerant in that line going to the evaporator. So just considering that, we can go a long way in understanding why it's called a condenser. Anytime you have a phase change from vapor to liquid in thermodynamics, that's called condensation, thus the condenser. So the condenser's job, it's real basic nuts and bolts job, is essentially to get the heat in the form of BTUs that were transferred from inside the cabin to the refrigerant and remove them to the environment here at the condenser. So that's the real job of the condenser. There's a lot of things that are happening during that phase change. I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but one of the terms that you might want to investigate a little further is this thing called latent heat. In Latin, I believe that's referred to as, uh, or that's defined as hidden. The word latent means hidden. So it's the hidden heat, the heat you can't really account for or measure with a thermometer. And that's very critical when it comes to uh, refrigerants, um, being able to move heat in and out of different uh, compartments. So here at the um, here at the May shuttle, the condenser is mounted on the outside of the vehicle. The refrigerant moves from inside the, uh, the cabin to the outside, takes the heat with it, and basically removes those BTUs um, by the condenser. So that's the basic nuts and bolts of the condenser itself. What I've got here is the air conditioning condenser that gets mounted on to the uh, May shuttle. As you can see, it's kind of large, probably weighs 25, 30 pounds, so it's pretty heavy. And um, just like with the compressor, you have to be very careful with these things before you go and use uh, heat on them or before you open up the ports because they are pre-charged with nitrogen. And again, we do that to keep atmospheric water from accumulating inside of these things. Um, in the case of the compressor that I spoke about in the earlier video, um, once that atmospheric water gets embedded inside of the oil, it's very difficult to draw out. And water's uh, extremely dangerous to the, uh, to the compressors and also to the evaporators and condensers. Uh, if water happens to get lodged into certain parts of this thing, it'll block off those channels so the, uh, the refrigerant won't be able to um, transfer its heat uh, as well as it should. Um, those, those areas within the uh, coils will be blocked off to the refrigerant. And uh, so basically it uh, makes the condenser smaller than it should be uh, if water gets in. So we take a lot of efforts uh, by sealing off these ports and pre-filling them with nitrogen um, with the evaporators, the compressors, and the condenser to avoid uh, atmospheric water from, from entering them. You can also see that uh, these pipes 
are um, of a different color than what we saw on the condenser or on the uh, compressor and what we will see on the evaporator. That's because these have been coated with uh, zinc chromate. The coils, which if you could look down inside of these fans, you can see, but those are also colored the same way. And the zinc chromate's job is to prevent oxidation uh, of the aluminum because once uh, the aluminum does start to oxidize, the heat transfer coefficient uh, changes and we don't get the transfer of those BTUs out of this unit like we would otherwise. So we want to avoid um, oxidation of the aluminum coils as best we can. The zinc chromate uh, does that. Uh, these units um, are basically two units in one. Uh, we don't have separate left and right units um, to make the installation easier. We combine them both into a single unit. But the refrigerant here at this unit from the right side and the left side never mixes together. So even though it looks like it's a, a single unit, it is uh, broken down uh, into a right and a left uh, condenser on the interior so that the refrigerant never mixes. You can also see that we've got these banks of fans um, that are in charge of moving the air from the high side to the low side. That's very critical. Each fan um, uses about 0.4 amps and they generate really a significant uh, CFM, cubic feet per minute of airflow. But because they don't use a lot of power, they're not very powerful. So any small little leaf, um, debris that, that uh, could get in, could get lodged between the, the fan and its housing, can prevent the, uh, the fan from spinning. Uh, there's not a lot of power there running it, so it doesn't take much to stop it. So we want to, we, we do go to some lengths to prevent that uh, from happening. We have filters um, that we use to kind of filter the air um, once these guys get installed to prevent things like leaves and plastic uh, uh, grocery bags and stuff that you we typically see blowing around in the environment from getting up inside of the air channel and getting into these fans. Uh, it's important that with these fans that they're flipped in the proper direction. So they actually could be installed like they are, or they could be flipped upside down. Uh, how they are now installed, the air is moving from top to bottom. If we flip them around, we actually get fans that are sucking air up through it. And we don't want to do that because the unit's about 18 inches off the ground, off of the road. And in the summertime, the road gets really hot and we don't want to be pulling that hot air off the pavement through this thing because we want the air to be as cool as possible so we can get the removal of as many BTUs as we can. So pushing air from above downward actually works a little better uh, to do that. The um, output side of this, which is underneath it, is nothing more than the coils. Uh, the coils run the distance from top to bottom. So if you flip this guy over, you'll see nothing but the bottom edge of those coils. And we do want to keep that area clean because there are spaces between the coils where the air has to flow in order to uh, take those BTUs and remove them from the refrigerant to the environment. So every uh, now and then, uh, those coil spaces uh, have to be checked and cleaned if necessary. Uh, with this uh, unit, we also have the, uh, the copper pipes, just like we did with the compressor and just like we will have with the evaporator. And you can see that there's four of these. There's actually two on the high side and two on the lower side. So these two are higher on this edge than these two here. 
And that's very important. We don't want to get these uh, backwards because the lines that go here have to be from the compressors and the lines that go to the two lower ones have to be going to the evaporators. And we had a bad situation in Providence, Rhode Island, where the evaporators got connected here and the compressors here and the um, cooling efficiency of these units drastically reduced. So um, we wanna make sure we get those right. Uh, they are different, high side, low side. Um, and we have to pay attention when we go to braze the copper piping to these things as to which goes where. We'll cover that in another video.